Hello and good evening. I'm Melissa Idris. And I'm Sharad Kutin. Welcome to Consider This. This is a show where we want you to consider and then we consider what you know of the news of the day. Budget 2022 included an allocation for menstrual kits for some 130,000 teenage girls from B40 families. This was after it was highlighted that many did not have access to sanitary pads during the pandemic due to financial constraints. Now, it the budget allocation had sparked a conversation about the issue of period poverty. Some, including Nurul Hidayah Zaid, the daughter of Amno's president, dismissed the seriousness of period poverty in the country, insisting that the san that sanitary pads, quote, do not cost much. But is period poverty misunderstood? Tonight, we speak to researchers and activists about it. Our first guest tonight is Dr. Fatima al Atas. She's a senior lecturer in sociology, and she's also a coordinator for the, for social, the Social Issues and Development Centre at International Islamic University in Malaysia. Dr. Fatima, thank you for being on the show. How should we um, begin to understand period poverty? I'm just wondering whether the issue is far more complex than the basic understanding of you know, not being able to afford or to access menstrual products. Okay, so if we're looking at period poverty, we're actually looking at four elements. Basically, the ability for a girl or an adult female or any menstruating body who needs um, to manage their period properly. So we're looking at number one is the sanitary product. So this is um, what we hear about a lot recently, um, not having access to sanit sanitary products. So they could be um, disposable sanitary pad, they could be tampons, menstrual cups or reusable um, cloth pads. So that's actually just the first element. We have three other elements. Um, second would be uh, wash facilities. So wash facilities is access to clean water, access to toilets, um, disposal management, meaning being able to dispose um, the disposable sanitary pads properly, and then also hand wash. Um, the third element is actually education uh, about menstruation, about reproductive health. So this is essential that um, the girl or the uh, women know how and why they menstruate and what's the process and what's the cycle looking like. So they know what's normal and what's not normal. Um, and then finally is the privacy to manage uh, menstruation with dignity. So having toilets that can be closed and shut properly and locked, um, not being shamed for having menstruation. So that will be the fourth element. So you from um, looking at this, we know that we've been focusing a lot more on the first element rather than considering all four elements and how they may be impacting uh, women in Malaysia. Fatima, can we address the question of those who would deny there is an issue around a period poverty or an issue that we describe as period poverty? Is it about the, the notion that um, of the embarrassment that an advanced nation like Malaysia has failed women, especially young girls, uh, not address this issue? So when we talk about period poverty, it's not just, um, you know, um, countries that are struggling economically. Um, we find period poverty all over the world. Um, we know that Scotland has just passed the bill to give out free sanitary pads. That means they address and they acknowledge that there's um, issues of period poverty there. So when we're talking about period poverty, we're definitely looking at issues of inequality, which is existent everywhere, um, and economic inequality. And then we're also looking at issues relating to gender inequality. So there's no doubt that period poverty can and probably happens everywhere as well. So whether or not we want to, you know, um, really realize and just know that, okay, uh, we accept that this happens in our country and what we're going to do about it. I mean, it's fascinating that you laid out the four elements that, you know, that uh, have to be addressed when we're talking about period poverty. And you're absolutely right. In Budget 2022, the allocation is just the first part of the of period poverty, the multi-dimensions of period poverty. And only for teenagers what? too. Oh, I see. So that means that it's specific to a single category. Are you saying that period poverty affects more than just teenage girls of the B40 group? Who, uh, based on your work and your research, does period poverty uh, uh, really impact? Okay, so based on the work that we've done in Malaysia, we are looking at several categories of women. So they're not always all affected in the same way and the severity of the period poverty that they experience experience are also different. So we're definitely um, finding differences between urban and rural areas and how they experience 
uh, period poverty. In really remote rural areas, we would see really severe cases where all four elements are missing. Um, so they won't have access to um, products, they won't have access to wash facilities, so no access to clean water, um, they don't have access to um, education about menstruation or reproductive health in general. And these are the cases that we find about pregnancy um, and things like that. So it's like a whole context of problem and they don't have um, access to toilets sometimes at all, so no space for them to manage their menstruation. Um, and then we find in the urban areas, severe cases um, would be those of um, homeless women who also might not have access to three of the elements. They may have gone through education or they may have access to education and have learned about menstruation, but um, at the time where they are homeless, they may not have access to three of the other elements. And then we would have, um, you know, um, teenagers which are going to be um, getting access to um, the budget that the government has released. So I think um, perhaps the government is trying to address um, the school absenteeism because of not having sanitary pads. So the impacts are also Fatima, different. Right. Sorry, we're running out of time, but very quickly, I want to ask you okay. what more we can do. And, you know, is it important that we recognize that this is not a problem for the individual, but actually impacts larger society? Absolutely. So um, I think we have to do three things. Number one is be curious about it, ask questions about it, um, get to know people who are working on the ground, the experts, the researchers, um, and then empathize. Um, we need a lot of empathy in our society. Um, and then definitely um, keep talking about it. Um, and that's how I suppose all of us can sort of uh, bring in together and get people to work on period poverty because we are really at the beginning uh, um, stages in Malaysia in addressing period poverty. Dr. Fatima, thank you so much for helping us better consider uh, the issue of period poverty. We appreciate your time. Dr. Fatima Alata so from much. IIUM. Thank you. We're going to take a quick break here and consider this, but we'll be back with more on this topic. Stay curious and stay tuned. Kebaikan keluarga, Breeze Triple Boost Teknologi Baharu berkesan membasmi virus, membersihkan kotoran degil, menjadikan pakaian segar dan wangi dengan formula mesra alam. Breeze kini dalam pak isi semula besar. Sering menggaya dan menyikat menyebabkan rambut gugur. Lupakan rambut gugur. Dove Hair Boost Nourishment Baharu. Shampoo bertekstur ringan dengan micellar membersih akar rambut. Dan calcium complex menguatkan rambut untuk 10 kali kurang rambut gugur. Dove Baharu. When the world was changing for photographic film, we helped change the world as a pioneer of the digital age. In healthcare, we're expanding what's possible with advanced technology. But why stop there when we can focus our AI and IoT expertise on business innovation, helping tackle some of the toughest challenges in the workplace? When it comes to innovating for a healthier world and a more sustainable society, we'll never stop. Fujifilm. Value from innovation. Anda boleh menghantar segera sentiasa menepati masa dan bajet anda dari motosikal ke lori. dan semangat menjadi kesinambungan perpaduan tanah air yang tercipta discussing the effects of period poverty in Malaysia which have often been denied or dismissed or even overlooked how can we correct these misconceptions and ensure evidence based policy adequately addresses the issue Let's speak now to Siti Aisha Hassan Hasri. She's the founder of Spot Community Project, who are behind the hashtag Puberty with Dignity and hashtag Nothing to Hide me social media campaigns. Aisha, um, can I ask you, I mean, this, as I mentioned in my intro, there's been a lot of people who've denied or dismissed the issue of period poverty. What do you say to the naysayers who, who don't see the seriousness 
of the problem of peer poverty in Malaysia? Thank you for the question. It's real. That's one thing that I have to say from the work that I've been doing with uh, teachers and students and parents. Uh, it's just a stone throw away. It's not even something that affects someone deep in the rural areas, just that. But also, you know, I've had stories of girls that I met who lives and go to school uh, just five minutes away shy from the one of the largest malls uh, in the city center. And they found themselves in a position whereby not just not having access to uh, um, pads, uh, you know, sanitary napkins, but also not having adequate uh, personal care items such as underwear. And that actually uh, put us in a position whereby we had to really ask, uh, you know, difficult questions and engage with real truths uh, of of the surrounding issues um, that actually led to this this problem. Um, so it's real. That's all I want to say. Yeah, I should. Can you help us understand the, 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 this precise dimension of it and how real it is? Uh, because I think many people uh, perhaps think that most Malaysians are reasonably well off. They can afford these basic things, um, for which, as, as you know, I'm I'm also learning, you know, have a tremendous impact on the person. So, you know, not being able to change a sanitary pad uh, often enough or when it's uh, optimal might have a, a very serious impact on your health and so on and so forth. Could you help us understand who are these people? Are they outliers, or is this problem bigger than we would care to admit? I would say in between of both, they are not outliers. As I mentioned earlier, uh, these problems actually affect people in the urban areas as well as the ones in the rural areas. And these girls, uh, most of them, already having trouble at home um, um, trying to address their needs, uh, you know, in terms of, of getting um, personal care items and and when they hit period. So this is this is the situation, right? I really believe that it is a an economical issue. It's an educational issue. It's a cultural issue. So for example, uh, there's shame around period that our girls want to feel less of a burden. Uh, um, you know, instead of telling their parents that I got period now, uh, I think I need pads, they will make shift solutions uh, so that they can keep their problems to, the to themselves a little longer. You know, the problem of poverty, again, as I mentioned earlier, there's no underwear. Some of them don't have underwear and, you know, they're having issues, uh, having putting food on the table. So they said to themselves, like, OK, I don't want to add to the burden of my family. But there's no food. There is no care. So I should be able to take care of this myself. There is also the lack of uh, comprehension of systems and, and access to, to rights. There's this problem of self-worth. Uh, they feel that it's impolite for them to request for such needs because for the longest time during their lifetime, they didn't have to ask for this. And all of a sudden they're bleeding and they're like, oh my God, this is the end of it. You know, I'm no longer. And then there's the problem of identity. Uh, as a child, you're innocent. You know, and then when you go through puberty, you all of a sudden have to immediately become an adult, uh, you know, and, and you have all the stigma around it that makes you feel dirty when you're on your, your period. And, and then you are faced with this absence of innocence, uh, the shame and, 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 and stigma and you losing your parents' attention as a child. So as a girl, these are the thoughts that go through uh, them when they start to menstruate and have no proper support at home uh, and they also cannot access that support from school uh, in terms of maybe not having uh, a lot of them I would say uh, would have issues also at schools in terms of not having um, teachers ready to offer them support or they feel again uh, you know, I'm already behind in class. If I were to stress this to my teacher, uh, then, you know, she would definitely hate me forever, for example. So there's a lot of shame and stress around getting period uh, in, in not just in rural areas, but also in urban settings as well. 
Yeah, you're absolutely right about the, the menstruation taboos and some of the social stigma that still surrounds period, even today in 2021. Can I ask you about how we can address that as a society, particularly in also educating not just young girls and women and teenagers, but also men and boys as allies to understand what happens during menstruation, how important um, sanitary products are during uh, that time in a woman's cycle? Well, I feel that we need to engage courageously with the truth, you know, with realities of, uh, of, of menstruation and all the issues that surrounds it. It's not a women-only problem. I think it's a problem of a common, you know, it's a health hygiene, uh, personal care problem. It needs to be address. So, so let's say if I were to be the Minister of Sexuality Education, I'll gift uh, all girls a kit once they turn 12, which comprises of an educational book about comprehensive sexuality education, what happens during the menstruation, what you should expect, how to manage yourself, how to manage expectations and stresses around it, and how to make sure that you have a control over things during all these changes and understand completely how your body works in order to be uh, uh, the healthy uh, adult that you potentially can be, right? We also, I will also provide a menstrual cup in, in that kit and, and an inclusive app for Q&A, you know, that covers multiracial, multi-religious, right. uh, multi-ethnic uh, 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 information. Uh, right. Aisha, by Aisha just, just a yes. quick one, a quick follow up from that. What would you tell fathers about what prioritizing? Yes. Yeah. Prioritizing. And, okay. So I would tell fathers to get yourselves educated. A lot of information are available. Get correct information. Also, you need to understand how to approach this uh, with your family values and cultural and heritage values. And it's also quite important to address boys as well. Um, uh, and, and let boys know uh, what goes through and why do girls menstruate. Um, and these are just the changes, different changes that happens during puberty. And it's a phase of life and it's a sign of vitality and it's a sign of good health. Um, and to understand that, uh, of course, it, it, it's a lifelong conversation. So it starts with basic stuff uh, that is that happens uh, to cover a lot of, of uh, issues uh, during puberty, the changes that happens emotionally right. and physically. Aisha, thank you for your time tonight. Appreciate your insights. Siti Aisha Hassan Hasrida from Spot Community Project. We're taking another quick break here on Consider This, but stay tuned. We'll be right back. When the world was changing for photographic film, we helped change the world as a pioneer of the digital age. In healthcare, we're expanding what's possible with advanced technology. But why stop there when we can focus our AI and IoT expertise on business innovation, helping tackle some of the toughest challenges in the workplace? When it comes to innovating for a healthier world and a more sustainable society, we'll never stop. Fujifilm. Value from innovation. Nikmati penjimatan 50% dengan penyelesaian penyagaan Unify. Dengan Microsoft 365, kolaborasi dengan pelanggan. Kongsi hasil kerja terbaik dan urus sebuah keperluan penyagaan anda. Layari unify.com.my slash SME Grant hari ini. Nikmati beras mewah. Mewah dengan kualiti. Mewah dengan khasiat. Memewahkan hidangan anda. Dapatkan beras mewah di cawangan terpilih dan secara atas talian sekarang. The Ten Rings gave our family power. You're just a criminal. Be careful how you speak to me, boy. I thought I could change my name. Start a new life. Is that what you wanted? Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. 2 plus November. Stream in Disney Plus Hotstar. Pelanggan Pack Movies. Aktifkan sekarang di astro.com.my slash Disney. Hi, 
Hi, thank you so much for staying with Shrat and I on Consider This. Let's continue our discussion about period poverty in Malaysia with a period poverty advocate and social entrepreneur, Anja Julia Abubakar. Anja, um, I know you've done a lot of work with Orang Asli communities and some of the more marginalised communities, young women in, in Sabah, particularly on menstrual health and hygiene. I wanted to ask you about some of your observations about the way period poverty manifests itself in Malaysia. How, what is it that we, sitting in our comfortable homes here in KL, don't understand about period poverty? All right. Okay. First of all, thank you so much for having me. And yes, um, we we as a social enterprise, we've been accounted these issues way back since 2012, when we were first approached by a group of missionary. That's when I learned about the issues that uh, we have girls that miss school five to seven days a month uh, due to have no access to. Uh, sanitary products, but I have no idea that it is called period poverty back then. And uh, what we focus more is on the uh, education outcome, because uh, to know that uh, girls not only miss five to seven days of school in a month, but some of them um, have to drop out because they are very young, 13, 14 years old, and when they use other alternative or substitute to disposable, proper disposable sanitary pads, and when it stained, um, leak and stain the school uniform, that's when, you know, uh, I mean, at school. So th this is some things that they can't um, take on, they can't control. And um, in fact, they just react and decided to just uh, leave school or drop out from school. So, uh, but we, we, we didn't like, um, we just like focus on how to solve the problem by providing uh, sanitary pads to them, uh, but we didn't like back then think uh, to share this to public. We just like work uh, silently, <laughs> uh, work with the communities, NGOs uh, in uh, in what area can we support? Yeah, Anja, it's very interesting you say silently bec uh, because there seems to be a lot of silence around this issue. W why do you think that is? I mean, girls missing school is a huge problem. Why do you think the if this has been one of the chief uh, reasons for uh, girls, especially in rural areas, to miss school, why has it not been addressed? What's stopping us from mm. having this conversation more openly? I guess... Um maybe back then we we that's first time we encountered such issues and we don't have any uh, data to support how many girls uh, have actually dropped out from school due to period issues and uh, but we started to uh, get called from uh, ngo to another ngo or even individuals and uh, surprisingly it's not only in uh, rural Sabah or Sarawak, we do have uh, these issues uh, in Selangor and we we uh, encountered that somewhere in 2017-2018. Uh, surprise, right? <laughs> in Selangor. Yeah. But we work with the, the girls and uh, in fact, we invite uh, speakers who are among uh, the, the former uh, um, uh, student who left uh, or, or dropped out uh, when she had her, uh, I mean, because she don't have access to sales product and she decided to drop out, I guess she was 15, 16 back then. So, uh, and when we do the distribution, we do some talks to, to the girls and we invited uh, the, these speakers to share their own experience and encourage the girls to, to, to voice out, to share their problems, not to just keep uh, with them. So. This is what we've been working so far. Not to say why we keep it silent, but uh, I guess we don't have experience back then. We we just like work among us. Uh, so yeah, mm. maybe that's the reason back then, uh, nine years you ago. Know, you're right, Anja. It's unthinkable that, you know, in this day and age, we still have young girls dropping out of school, missing school because of, you know, um, issues with their menstruation. Can I ask you, I mean, particularly now that we're coming out of a pandemic, schools have restarted again. I'm just wondering, what is it that you think might make a significant difference in 
ending period poverty and its negative impacts, particularly on young girls and schooling girls, what can be done perhaps at a policy level, at a legislation level? What would you like to see as a, an advocate working to eliminate period poverty? Uh, okay, uh, what we've been trying to do is, uh, apart from distributing free sentry products, I mean, we sponsored with uh, the amount that we make uh, because uh, we contribute 35% of our operation costs by uh, giving away free sentry products to our beneficiaries. But we really select the beneficiaries. And um, I guess back to your question is that uh, we, um, I mean, of course, as Rakyat, we 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 uh, really appreciate what the government tried to do, uh, especially from the policy maker when they decided to give away free um, uh, century products to 130,000 uh, uh, women uh, per month. But uh, although, yeah, it's good. I mean, because you cannot simply uh, stop or, or de decline because we don't know the outcome yet. Of course, uh, while giving it away, there there be some measures that are going to take, and we we just need to be patient, see the res, uh, see the what the outcome after the distribution, maybe after six months, eight months, uh, do they really uh, work with uh, communities that work closely with the uh, targeted uh, beneficiaries and. Uh, and so on. I mean, um, right. so Anja, sorry, we're... Anja, can I jump in there very quickly? I, I could <laughs> sure, be running sure. out of time. I just want to ask you, we've been focusing a lot on schools and, and school going kids. Are there any other areas? I'm thinking of prisons, for instance, and, or refugee camps. Where should we also look to address this issue, especially if the needs are critical? Uh, yes. Um, in fact, I did some uh, interview with former, I mean, ex uh, prisoner, and learned about the issues inside um, where they also needed it badly when they have their period because uh, I, I was told that they are given one piece a day, and some are very creative when they uh, just uh, remove the 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 cotton inside and use as tampon. So uh, maybe uh, this, uh, apart from giving the disposable uh, pads, maybe we can get these uh, uh, prisoners to 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 make the cloth pad and distribute. I I don't know uh, because uh, we yeah. have well like yeah think about this. Uh, but that's a that's a that's a very good idea. Appreciate that insight. We should probably look into that. Anja, thank you so much for being on the show tonight. We really appreciate your time and you sharing your insights and the advocacy work that you do. Period poverty advocate and social entrepreneur there, Anja Julia Abubaka, joining us on the show, wrapping up this episode of Consider This. Don't forget to get the latest news and information on COVID-19 vaccines at astrawani.com as well as the Astrawani app. Thank you so much for watching the show. I'm Melissa Idris. And I'm Sherrod Kutten, signing off for the evening. Good night, folks. <laughs>